Welcome, I'm Anna, and we are now going to look at Unit 15 at um, the mammary glands and pregnancy. All right, so let's look at the breast and the lactating state. The previous slide has some notes, which I'll be discussing on this slide, but if you need the written notes, they're over there. So first of all, we're talking about the lactating state. And when that is there, when that is there, um, when you're lactating, the glands basically become active and they kind of swell in size and you get the big fat cuboidal cells that are going to be making milk and then secreting it into the ducts, okay? If you were looking at non-lactating, okay, these over here, which are the glands, those would be a lot smaller. You would notice a lot more fat, okay? The, the bulk of the breast tissue, all right, you'll notice that this one, you know, we've got a nice cup A here because there's just not that much fat. If you want to go up a size, then you need to add fat. You know, if you go up to a C, you add a whole lot of fat. The size of the breasts is minimally determined by the size of the mammary gland, mostly determined by how much fat is deposited around the mammary gland, okay? So when we're looking at this gland, you've got the lobes of the gland, which are going to basically look like a flower, and they kind of go like that in a radiating pattern around the entire breast, okay? They will have ducts right here that are going to be collecting the milk as it's secreted down into here. Now notice that there are lots and lots of ducts that come up to the nipple right here. Um, and so when the milk comes out of the nipple, you're actually going to have multiple streams of milk. Okay, So you've got your gland, the duct, also called the lactiferous duct. When these things start to come together and they start to get bigger and fatter, we'll call them lactiferous sinus. I don't really care if you remember that or not, but that's the way it's working. All right, next slide. All right, so we have the stages of development. All right, so for this, what you need to know are the different stages. Just memorize them quickly. You know, you've got um, zygote, cleavage, marola, blastocyst. So zygote, you should remember you know, um, pretty easily because you've probably heard that term. Blastocyst is going to be the stage where it actually implants into the uterine lining, so you definitely want to know that. So at the blastocyst stage, you've got the three germ layers, which um, you should have noticed, um, which should have been discussed in lecture class. Um, it's going to drop into the uterus around day 17 of the cycle, so about three days after ovulation. All right hangs out there for a couple of days. It's secreting um, HCG, which is keeping the corpus luteum going. Um, it's gonna implant on around day 21, so about seven days after ovulation. Um, and during that process is gonna start um, uh, the formation of the placenta, okay? By day 28, the uterine mucosa completely covers what we are now calling an embryo. Okay, next slide. All right, so let's talk about the placenta uh, and the chorionic villus. There's a slide on the previous page that um, does some definitions. Um, okay, let me actually reduce this a little bit in size. Okay, so if you look over here on this side, you have the basically the amniotic sac beginning to form here, okay? Um, excuse me, uh, here. And this is the endometrial tissue, so amniotic sac here. The embryo is in here. You can see the beginnings of the umbilical cord with the umbilical arteries and veins right here. The little bit of yolk sac. Okay. Now, this thing here is called a chorionic villus, multiples villi. Okay. This is what's going to form the placenta, and it's formed by a union of the fetal and maternal blood um, tissues. So let's go over here, and what you'll see is you've got the umbilical artery and vein right here, and they go up into this felis right here, and you've got this lining of cuboidal cells up in here, 
okay? And then on the other side, there's a bath of blood. This is the maternal blood supply. And things will diffuse from this blood supply to that blood supply across these membranes. So this is the, the placental membrane right here. This is really important because we need oxygen, gases, nutrients to go back and forth, but we do not want the mother's antibodies or the baby's antigens mixing because they will attack each other because the embryo over here is a different organism. It is not the same organism as the mother, and so the mother's body will attack it like it's a parasite. All right, so once you're done with the whole gestation thing, you want to get the, the baby out, okay? So that's going to go through parturition, or um, also called childbirth or child labor, Parter, parturition, okay? So this is started by the fetal cells producing oxytocin, which then goes across the placenta to the mother's hypothalamus, triggers a positive feedback loop between the fetal tissues and the mother's hypothalamus producing more and more oxytocin, okay? When you get enough of this going on, you start stage one, which is the dilation stage. First pregnancy, six to 12 hours, okay? It's gonna continue to do contractions um, until the cervix is dilated to about 10 centimeters. During this process, you go from contractions being maybe 40 minutes to an hour apart to being under five minutes apart and getting much, much stronger, okay? Stage two is the expulsion stage. So this should take 50 minutes to two hours for the first birth. It can take longer, it can be shorter. And this is where you're actually delivering the, the fetus. Um, and then the placental stage is where you go through this all over again, but much faster to deliver the placenta because the placenta needs to be removed from the uterus as well. So um, basically contractions um, cut off the blood supply to the uter the, to the placenta, the placenta's blood supply causes, when that happens, the, the arteries kind of break away and then it starts to separate from the uterine wall and it can be delivered. And that whole placental stage, again, much faster, about 15 minutes. Um, very, very strong contractions. And those strong contractions are also important because the uterus is tired and there would be a tendency for the uterus to, to basically bleed out until there's nothing left if you didn't do these very strong contractions which basically it's kind of like when you cut yourself, you press down on the, the bleeding to make it stop. So it's that constriction phase of hemostasis. Um, so that's what's going on there. All right, so here we've got an artistic drawing, which I think is interesting because you can see the mother's bones and then you can see the baby in here. So here's the mother's femur. Here's her pelvis, her vertebrae. What's interesting is that the baby's eyes should be looking at the sacrum. Okay, when it starts to put to go through the birth canal. And then the baby is gonna start rotating its head. So you can see it's here. And then on the next slide, we'll see that it... So now you can see, so it's kind of over here to the, the side and then it's rotating more anteriorly. And then it's kind of in this direction. So basically that the baby is going through the birth canal kind of like a corkscrew. And it kind of twists out, which is kind of fun when you think about it. All right, that was the end of this uh, mini lecture and you can go on to the next thing.